Fatima here. Today, we're going to learn a piece called Distant Bells. Distant Bells uses changing clefs, hands crossing over technique, and marcato accent work. Let's get started. All right, Distant Bells. We're in the key of blank major. So let's take a look at our key signature. No sharps and no flats. So we know we're in C major. Where's my pencil? So I'll put in C major. Okay. And then it says andante. Do you remember what andante is? It means like a walking tempo. So we'll take it at a nice, easy walking tempo. Okay. Then we see our time signature. Aha. Uh -huh, that was a little different. We see a C there. C is for common time. And we're going to see that this is 4-4. Four, four. So anytime you see this C for your time signature, it's 4-4, four, four, meaning four beats per measure, and the quarter note gets the beat. All right, so we start off, let's take a look at our dynamics. We see piano in the beginning, right? So soft, and then we don't really see any other markings, so it's probably piano throughout that whole portion. And then on this next page, we see a crescendo, and then decrescendo, or diminuendo, right? And back down to piano. So you can kind of use your judgment to see how loud you want to get, back down to piano, We'll keep going for a while. I still see piano. And then another one, we're going to gradually crescendo into this measure and then decrescendo all the way to the end and get to pianissimo. Now, of course, you can add your own little flair and add a little bit of crescendo and diminuendo and, and change the dynamics, whatever sounds good to your ear. All right. Now we also have a couple of tempo changes, right? So we start here andante, so walking tempo, all the way through here. And then we see a ritardando. So we're going to slow down a little bit here. And then a tempo means back to that original tempo, the andante. We'll keep going, keep going. And then here at the end, another ritardando all the way to the end. Don't forget your fermata and you can hold that as long as you feel it's beautiful and then release. All right, since in our last lesson, we were talking about marcato markings and clef changes, let's start with our left hand because we see both of those things. All right, so we start on our five finger. It's just a quarter note. Then we have a rest and then we have our two finger. Look, this is a treble clef now, right? So we were in the bass clef and then now we're in the treble clef. So we have the C down here and then we're gonna go to the C up here with our two finger. Okay, now remember this little carrot looking mark is a marcato accent mark. It means we want to strike it with kind of an aggressive sound so it sounds like a bell tone almost, right? So you're going to give it a good... And remember, we're going to use that technique where we kind of drop our hand down and let gravity give you that bell tone, okay? And you're going to have a slight spring back in your wrist but you're just releasing your hand down onto the keyboard and letting the gravity do the work of the sound, okay? So we have the five finger here, rest, and then, right, we got the marcato. Now that's two beats. Now look here, back to the bass clef, we got G, and then a rest again, and look, back to treble clef, and that's B. Now, we don't have any more fingerings written in for the left hand, so we're going to do five and two throughout, okay? So five on the bottom, two for the top note, okay? Back to bass clef, down to G, rest. Now up to the F. All right, back down to bass clef, C, rest, E, bass clef, C, rest. C up here now, right? Back to bass clef, G, rest, B, bass clef is coming. So I like how they give you a little heads up. They say, hey, I know we're in treble clef right now, but we're going to bass clef in the next line. And then it is, right? So we go to G, rest, G up here, and then C, rest, C. Down G, rest, B, and then don't be deceived. Here we have bass clef again. So even though we played B here, right? Now we go to bass clef. So this is a D. Rest, A, right? Then bass clef again. We have D. And then the marcato on the C. Down to G. And then treble 
clef again, B, down to G in bass clef, B in treble, D in bass, and then A in treble. So it's next bass speed. They give us a little heads up. We're going to bass clef. And then here, right, we're staying in bass clef. So one, two, and then I'm going to play one and three here on the F sharp and the C. Okay. And then you can go to one and two or one and three, whatever's easiest for you. Okay. And then I'll rest here. Now back to one, five finger, rest, and we're going to go back out to the treble clef, two finger, right? And then down to G in the bass clef, and then B in the treble, down to G, rest, F, C, and then E, down to C again, rest, C, G down here, rest, B, G down here, G high, C, C, C down here, now E, C, G, C, high C. All right, and you can hold that for a mod out as long as you like. Actually, that one doesn't have a marcato, so you don't have to do the marcato accent on that one. All right. Now time for our right hand. So our left hand was really the melody, right? Where we heard all those, the striking bell sounds with those marcados, those are cool, right? So the right hand is actually gonna be the accompaniment. And we're gonna start with our two and four fingers, okay? On the E and B, okay? And notice we have this phrase mark, right? The slur line. So we wanna try to make this whole piece kind of smooth and melodic. And we're gonna start piano. So that all goes together. It's pretty easy. Two, four, and then one. And then here, we're gonna go to three, four, and one. And then keep going, right? And then back to two and four. these are all eighth notes right and then a quarter note so we have one and two and three and and then rest on the four and right so eighth notes and then your quarter notes so subdivide in your head or out loud if you want to okay then we're gonna go to this next measure it's one two one two five i'll go one and two and three and four and and then i'll still play one and two one and two and three i'll play fourth finger on that f sharp okay Same as here, one and two and three and four and. Okay, now here's a really fun measure. Uh, this is the only measure that's really different from any of the other ones. Well, here a little bit, but let's take a look. We have C, one, C sharp with our two finger, underneath to the one, to the F sharp with our two, and then five, back down to four, two, one, and then up to three. Cool, right? So let's do it in time. We have three and four and one and two and three and four and one. Okay, so this is a fun measure. You're going to practice that really slowly until you can get all of these notes. that hard just want to make sure you get the fingers in the right place okay so then we have three here and then it repeats but there's a retardando so when you're learning it you just want to make sure you can do that right in time but as we get there you're gonna go a little bit you're gonna slow down a little right so you're gonna play one and two and then you can slow it down okay that was a little dramatic but you get the idea
Okay, so you're gonna slow down a little and then back to the original tempo right here. And we've seen this somewhere before, right? Exactly, here we are. Okay, and as we practice, we're gonna try to practice getting those two notes together at the exact same time. Okay, I know I did it too, but you might start to get that sound or this sound, right? You wanna get them right together. There you go. That's why we practice. See, I just did it there. And then the two and three there. Okay, just like we did before, right? This retard, right? The retardando. So we can go. And you can be as dramatic as you like with that retardando. I just did a little bit of a retardando, but you can go. Or you can play right in time. You do whatever sounds good to your ear. But remember, we're going from piano, and then we're going to crescendo, and then we're going to get softer again all the way down to pianissimo. So it probably will sound really cool if it gets softer and it gets quieter to the very end. All right, we have some questions down here. It says, how many thirds are played in the right hand of this piece? Wow, of this whole piece? Okay, let's go count. I'm gonna get my pencil here so I'm ready. How many thirds in the right hand of this whole piece? So let's go. There's one, two, three, four, no. Five, six, seven, eight, 9, 10, 11, 12, no, no, 13, 14, 15, okay, I have 15 so far, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, 38, 39, 40, 41, 42. Did you also get 42? I hope so. But if you got a different answer than me, we'll just go back and count it again, okay? Because I'm not sure if I'm, that's exactly right. Let's see, how many seconds are played in the right hand of this piece? Okay, let's look. All right, no, 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 no. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. No, I have 16 so far. 16, 16, 16, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32. Okay, 32 so far. Keep going. Okay, I think it's just 32. You can ask your teacher to help you check the answers too. All right, good job, everyone. All right, so you're gonna practice that left hand slowly, okay? And then you're gonna practice that right hand slowly, and then you're gonna put the hands together. And remember, we're gonna have that left hand crossing over the right hand, and we have that cool marcato bell sound, right? So let me give you a quick preview of what it, what it will look like and sound like. So it's going to look and sound something like this. Okay, you like how there was that bell sound in there? Okay, and this is going to sound cool if there's just a little bit of pedal in there too. So you're going to use your ear to determine where the pedal sounds good and where you want to lift it. Because if you hold it too long, it might start to sound messy, right? It actually holds that note out for you if you hold the pedal, so that's kind of cool too. Okay, so you decide where you like to hear the pedal and notice how my left hand is crossing over my right hand. You like that? Okay, so you're gonna work on that and then if you find anywhere that you want to sound a little bit different, because that's your own personal art, you do that and then share it in a recital with your friends and family.
So today, we learned distant bells using that cool bell marcato sound and also crossing our hands over, which is always fun and looks very beautiful on stage as well. So remember, keep practicing all your songs, sing while you play, and memorize everything. Press DCMA out.